Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to another class of Israel Evolve. Brother Obadiah and Brother Juan. Israel. Shalom. Shalom. All right. Today's lesson is going to be called We Are the People of the Book. We Are the People of the Book. And some of you already may already know this. But um, we're going to go into detail because some, some of our people don't know. And we're going to be able to um, make it where you can send this class out to others. Um, you know, and letting them know, you know, share it. Whatever it is that you're going to do to get it out there. Especially people that don't, um, that don't believe that we're the people. So now we're going to start with today's lesson. So, Brother Juan, let's get um, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whosoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope so the scriptures say for whatsoever things were written aforetime meaning they were written before our time was written from the time of Moses from when the Most High gave him um, gave him the history prior to his birth all the way up to where we at right now so what we're going to do is we're going to go through that line by line, here a little and there a little, to show and prove in the series of events as they took place on the earth so you can follow the history of what actually took place and how we ended up in slavery and um, why we went into slavery and, um, and how all these things took place in the scriptures Versus the history on the earth. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get um, the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Okay, so the he here is the most high. He established a testimony in Jacob. Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. And appointed a law in Israel. That means he gave the Israelites, the children of Israel, a law for us to follow. Go ahead. Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them own to their children. Them so, known to their children. So, so he gave a, he, he, uh, gave a commandment to our fathers so that we'll make these laws known to our children, right? So is it supposed to be known to our children uh, just the day that he told them? Let's get it, Jim. Uh, let's get it, Brother Juan. Uh, read verse 6. Psalms chapter 78, verse 6. That the generation to come might know them. So start right there. So he said that the generation to come might know them. That means that all the generations after the time that he gave this law would know the laws, meaning that they never stop. Read. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Exactly. So that means that all the children that were born after this was, after this was um, commanded, the law that was appointed to Jacob, after those children are born and those children, children are born through generations that this law is to continue throughout. Go ahead, read. Chapter eight. Uh, yes. Uh, seven. Verse eight. Yeah, it's no seven. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. Start right there. So the reason why it said that we should, um, declare this to our children and our children children is so that 
that might set their hope in the most high. So you set your hope in the most high, that means that this thing lasts forever. And why we set our hope in the most high? Go ahead, read that. But keep his commandments. Right. So in verse 7 again, when it says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of the most high. That's real simple. The only way you're going to forget the works of the most high, that means that you ain't practicing what the most high say do. If you ain't practicing what the most high say do, then you're going to forget. That's what anything we do. We if if you in school and you learn arithmetic and you learn how to divide and divide and multiply fractions, right? And then you forget the principles that go behind dividing and multiplying fractions because you ain't been in school uh, practicing that um that form for some time. It could be 10, 15, 20 years. You're going to forget how to do it. So what ends up happening is you looking at the problem and you, and you remember that some parts of it, but you don't remember the whole thing. So now somebody might show you something and then you'd be like, oh, okay, okay, now it's coming back. I remember. That's the same thing that's happened to us when we go through these scriptures. That's the same thing. That's why it's so important for us to remember our history, our past, because it solidifies what we're going through right now. So go ahead, read, brother, uh, verse 8. Verse 8. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Start right there. Read 7 again. Read that whole, that verse 7 again. Verse 7. That they might set their hope in the Most High, and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep His commandments. But keep His commandments. Go ahead, hit 8. Verse 8. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. So, so most I just said, so they might not be like their fathers, meaning that our forefathers before us, they didn't want to listen to what the Lord said. They wanted a king when the most I was our king. But no, we want to have a king like our forefathers wanted to have a king like the other nations. So they could do what they wanted to do. Now, because of these things, we suffering. So now the Lord is saying that maybe this word will hit the children after you that actually might do what the Lord say do. And because of that, they're going to teach their kids and their kids going to teach their kids. And then maybe we could get Israel back on track. Well, we're witnessing that right now. We're witnessing that actions happening right now with the camps that's, that's up all over the country. Doesn't matter the doctrine that they teach. You know, we may disagree on certain things in doctrine, but at the same time, every last one of them is teaching that we the children of Israel, and this is how they've proven that we the children of Israel. So go ahead, read um read the rest of verse eight. A generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with the most high. That's right. So now we know that our spirit is steadfast with the Most High. Yeah, we may bump our head every once in a while and do something crazy, but we know that we're not going to continue to do those things. We're going to repent and we're going to shut it down and stop doing it. That's the whole purpose. So let's go to um, Exodus chapter 19. Because this law that was appointed to us, that was given, you know, given to our forefathers, we made a pact with the Most High. So we can read that and see what our forefathers did that put us, um, that bind us to the contract that the Most High made with the children of Israel. So let's get um, Exodus 19 and start at verse uh, 5. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a per procure peculiar peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine um did that say we gonna be equal to all people nope it said what we'll be above all people okay so if you're above all people you ain't equal read and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation did he say an unholy nation Holy nation. A holy nation. Read. 
There are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Read. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded. So Moses yeah. called for the elders of the people. What people? The Israelites. Read. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken, we will do. Some of the people answered? All the people. All the people answered. So all the people answered the Lord and said, What the Lord said, we will do. That sounds like a promise to me. Don't that sound like a promise to you, brother? Yes. That's exactly what we did. We made a promise to the Most High. Everything that he said, we, will, we was going to do it. That's a binding contract. The Most High don't play with no words. If he said that this is what it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. He made a binding contract with the children of Israel. And we made this statement that whatever the Lord said, we was going to do it. What did Moses do once the Lord said, I mean, once we told the Lord that everything that he said, we're going to do it. Go ahead. Read the, um, the bottom part of that precept of verse 8. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So Moses took back what we said we're going to do to the Lord back to the Most High. So now we locked and loaded in this contract. The children of Israel now locked and loaded in the covenant that the Most High made with us. So that means from here on out, everything is on us. Doing what we're supposed to do to keep the Most High laws. Period. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 1. So ain't going to be no, um, well, I wasn't there. I ain't had nothing to do with that. No, your bloodline was there. You got everything to do with it. Don't think that you're going to reap the benefits of the bloodline of Jacob, Israel. You're going to reap the benefits, but yet you don't suffer the consequences of not doing what you're supposed to do or get the gifts for doing what you're supposed to do. So let's get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Go ahead and read verse 1, brother. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Stop right there. Did he just say all Israel or all nations? All Israel. All Israel. So these are the words that Moses spake unto all Israel. These, these words that we're going to read in the book of Deuteronomy are the words that he spoke to all Israel. No other nation, just the nation of Israel, the people, not a place, the people. So leave that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And get verse, um, uh, start at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He chose them to be a what? A special people a unto himself. A special itself. people unto himself. If he chose you to be a special people unto, your, unto the most high self, that means that we are special to him. Read. Um, after himself. No, verse six. Our special people unto oh, verse six. Yeah. Uh, unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, that's everybody. We're gonna be equal. That's a, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That means above all the people on the face of the earth. How can you get that misconstrued? We ain't equal. We above all the people on the face of the earth. He chose us over everybody on the face of the earth. Read. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in a number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Okay, so now he just made another distinction. He just said... 
that we are not we are not the the um um the majority of the people on the earth. He just said that we are the we are the fewest of the people on the earth. So that means out of all the people on the earth, the Israelites are still the least amount of people. Right or wrong? Right. Is that what the scriptures say? Yeah, we scattered around the the um all over the world. And the, yes, the Lord said that we number the uh, more than the sands of the sea. But he still said that we're the least than all the people on the earth, right? Right. So that means that, okay, yeah, our numbers may be more than the sands of the sea, but that means all the other nations are more than the sands of the sea too. We got to stop being simple about what the scriptures say and follow exactly what the scriptures say. No matter what, we still a minority of all the people on the earth. Period. Thus said the Lord. I didn't write this. Brother Juan ain't wrote it. This is what the scriptures say. This is what Moses is telling us. So go ahead. Read that verse 7 again. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you. Because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Read. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So bondmen is slavery, right? In verse 8, when it says, because the Lord loved you and because, because he kept the oath which he sworn unto your fathers. That oath that he sworn unto our fathers was the oath that we was reading about in Exodus when we said that everything the Lord said, um, said for us to do, we said we're going to do it. That's the oath that he swore between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the oath. Now it says... That the Lord brought us out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, men out of the house of slavery. So he brought us out of the house of slavery when no other nation could have saved us. We couldn't save ourselves. The Most High did it. He brought us out. One thing you got to understand with the scriptures is it's one thing for some people to say that. Um, history repeats itself. But see, every time the Most High repeats something, it's better the next time. So we already had an exodus out of Egypt. That's what exodus means. We left Egypt because the Most High brought us out. Well, guess what? We're going to have another exodus. A second exodus. Out of this captivity we're in now. So, um, let's get, um, Exodus 20. It's very important that Exodus 20, when we go into that, that you really pay attention to the words that's coming off the page and that you follow along what the scriptures say because they're very important. So go ahead, brother. Uh, read verse, go ahead, start with verse 1 and read. Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay, so start right there. So the Most High said, um, he spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So the Most High called Egypt the house of bondage. Okay, which means the house of slavery. So that's what he called Egypt. Go ahead, read verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the Most High is now telling us that we can't have no other gods before him. Uh, verse 4. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath mm -hmm. or that is in the water above under the earth. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. And I'm a, I'm a sharing God. 
He said, I'm a jealous God. Read. Visiting the iniquity of our fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation. That's of what I wanted right there. That right there. Let me explain that to you. In case you don't get it. That scripture, that part of that scripture right there when it says visiting the iniquity, the iniquity is sin of the fathers. That means that all the fathers before us, he's visiting their sin. Where is he visiting that sin? Onto the what? The third and fourth generation. That means the generation that come after the fathers is who going to pay for what you did before that. That's what it means. So all the sins that our forefathers did, the children of Israel that's on the earth right now is paying for it. Our ancestors that was before us paid for the sins of the forefathers before them. And it's just a continuous cycle. Until we get our heads out of our four point of contact, which is your behind, and start keeping these law, statutes, and commandments so that we understand that this is how we get out of this mess. This is how we speed up the process of bringing the Messiah back here. Because when we, when he gets to the point where he no longer going to wait for us, ain't nothing we can do about it. That two thirds that the scriptures speak of, it was going to, we're going to be put to death. And those that are committing, uh, doing the righteous act, that one third, we, we the ones that's going to make it. We the ones that's going to make it. But trust and believe this, if you didn't know, every Israelite on the face of this planet, listen to what I'm saying very closely. Every Israelite on the face of this planet, before you be judged, will know that you are the children of God. You will know this. I'm telling you now. Forewarning. Regardless if you believe or you don't believe. You will know that you are the children of God before destruction comes. That's going to be your last chance to get it right. I'm telling you now. So he said he's going to re revisit, um, visit the iniquities of our fathers in the third and fourth generation. But brother Juan, finish that part when he said the third and fourth generation, because we about to clear up something with these cats always talking about God is love. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and, and see what the Lord say. Um, start, start after I'm a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them who hate me. Them that hate me. Hold what you got. Let's go to first John. How we know who hate the Lord. We're going to make it real clear. Let's go to first John. And um, chapter five, go to first John chapter five and start at verse two. First John chapter five, verse two. By this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. When we love God and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. That means that his commandments are not hard. So if you love God, you keep his commandments. So the opposite of that is if you don't keep his commandments, you what? You don't love him. You don't love him. That means you hate him. So that's why the Most High said what he said in verse 6. Uh, I mean, excuse me, in, in the bottom part of verse 5, in the bottom part of that precept, he said that. Of them that hate me. And them that hate me. Them that hate me are those that don't keep his commandments. Period. Go ahead, read verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. On Go ahead on to thousands of them that love me and, and keep my commandments and keeping his commandments. Go ahead. Read verse seven. 
Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So now when he said to take the Lord thy God name in vain, we running around out here, we go through our little, you know, people get hurt or whatever. And they say, oh, Lord, help me. But your ass eating a, a pork sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got damn diabetes and, and um, um, high blood pressure. And you talking about the Lord help you because you're in the hospital getting all your arteries choked off and you're going to call it. That's calling the Lord name in vain or because you're behind in trouble. You call the Lord name to help you out of the mess you in. That's calling the Lord name in vain. You want him to hear you keep them commandments. Then that's when he hear you. You go praying to the Lord and you ain't trying to hear what we saying and what me and the brother trying to show you and you're not doing that. Guess what? You setting yourself up for failure. You setting yourself up for failure. Let, let's get that because, you know, they don't believe nothing we say. Mm -hmm. We got to let them see what the scriptures say. Let's go to um, Proverbs. Get Proverbs 28. And go ahead and read verse 9 when you get it, brother. These people think this is some kind of joke. That we over here playing games, we trying to save your life. Let's see Proverbs twenty-eight and nine. Proverbs twenty-eight, verse nine. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers shall be an abomination. Mm. That's heavy. Say, he that turneth away, man, I don't want to hear nothing you talking about, bruh. I don't want to hear nothing you talking about, sister. I don't want to hear, oh my God, here we go again. Mm -hmm. You in that Bible. This and that Bible. They don't want to hear nothing you saying. But you praying to the Lord because something done bust you upside your head or you done crash up your car and you ain't got no way to get to work. Now you want to call the Lord. He ain't hearing none of your prayers. He said your prayers making them sick to his stomach. They come up there, they come up there, the Lord mad. Make them want to vomit hearing your prayers come up there knowing you ain't doing nothing to keep none of his commandments. Ain't even trying. So let's go to, um, let's get to the meat and the potatoes now. So let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, no, 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 no. Finish verse 7 on Exodus 20. Um, yeah, we need to finish that. Finish verse 7 in Exodus 20, verse 7. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. What more can we say? The most I say, he ain't going to hold you guiltless that take his name in vain. Stop playing with the most high. That's what we're telling you. This ain't no game. Stop playing with the Lord. Because I'm telling you right now, the prophets of the Lord, we head busters. And we letting you know right now, you better do what the Lord say or you're going to be destroyed. And your regeneration ain't going to never come back. Let's get um, Deuteronomy 28. Because you remember, the brother brought out in Deuteronomy chapter 1 that Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. Okay, so now... Let's see what he told the children of Israel. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 28 and go ahead and read verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. Some of them. All his commandments. Just um, a few here and there. All his commandments. All his commandments. Read. Which I command thee this day, that thy Lord thy God set thee on high above all nations on the earth. Equal with all nations on the earth. Above all nations on the earth. Above all nations on the earth. So when this scripture say shall come to pass, that means the future tense. That means future tense shall come to pass. Meaning if we hearken means listen. We listen to the Lord diligently. That means that with all our understanding and with uh, without no distractions, we listen to the Lord. 
on his voice and keep all his commandments that all these um, and, and um, command that this day that the Lord will thy God will set thee on high above all nations on earth. I think that's a pretty fair deal. If we listen to what you say, Lord, and do what you say, you're going to put us above all nations on the earth. Now, I'm telling you, when that, when, when Brother Juan just brought out that scripture in 1 John chapter 5, and it said that the law was not grievous, meaning that the laws ain't hard. I'm still trying to figure out how is it so hard not to eat shrimp? How is it so hard not to eat crab or lobster or pork sandwich? How is that hard? It's not hard. But it's because what you want to what you want to do, you're going to do it. I ain't never met a person in my life addicted to a pork chop sandwich. Mm. I ain't never met nobody like that. You got people out here, the doctor tell them, if you don't stop eating such and such, you're going to die. Then they sitting on the bed one day and they got a big old hole in their foot and they, and they sitting here going to call the Lord because now your foot rottening off because you got all that pork in you. You know what I'm saying? And then they tell you, um, I hate to inform you, but we're going to have to chop off your leg. And guess what? It don't stop there. It don't stop there because you got a hole in your toe from that diabetes. It don't stop there. The leg get cut off. Then the thigh get cut off. Then the other damn leg get cut off. Then the other thigh get cut off. Then your life and your lights get cut off. The lights in your brains. All because you love that damn pork chop sandwich. Hmm. And, that, and that all you can eat shrimp at Red Lobster. Let me tell you something. We ain't all above reproach. I used to eat shrimp back during that time before I understood that I couldn't eat it. But as soon as I found out I couldn't eat it, guess what? Hmm. I quit. I ain't had no taste to want to go back and want to try it or looking at other people doing it and say, you know what, man, that shrimp look good. Let me, <laughs> just one more again, let me try it. Guess what? You know what ain't happened for me? Because that one more again could have killed me right there on the spot. Because mm -hmm. I knew the truth. I knew the difference. That's willfully sinning. I love life, but I ain't willing to die for my damn self because I want to do something crazy. Who want to do that? You, you ain't nowhere. Anymore. You can't love you. But some people out there, man, they they love it. They love just doing stupid things, and because nothing happened to them right then, they think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and pff, I'm good. I'm good. But you know what you forgot? Brother Juan just told you in Exodus 20 and verse 5 at the bottom part of that precept that he visited the iniquities of our father in the third and fourth generation. So you eating that pork chop sandwich, your kids after you or your grandkids might come up with some disease out of this world that killed them. And guess who to blame? You. 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 Now get that through your head. Because that's how this thing works. Go ahead. Jump over uh, verse 15. Brother. Now we already read. He already uh, read. If we listen to the Lord. That he's going to put us above high on all nations on the earth. And, and we have all these blessings. Okay. We had that for like a combined 80 years. And then like 80 years straight. Then we had a little 10 years here, 15 years there, 20 years here, 7 years here. When we started getting tore out of the frame till we ain't had no more years. We was in captivity from then till now. 
So go ahead and read verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now he said, if you don't listen and do what the Lord say, all these curses is going to come upon us and overtake us. All these curses. So we're going to go into these curses. And the reason why we got to go into these curses, because guess what, people? These curses identify who the people of the book is. When you hear the curses, guess what? It's going to narrow down all the belief in your mind of who these people are because these things only happen to one people on the earth. Out of all the nationalities on the face of the earth, these things only happen to one group of people. So let's find out who those people are. Go ahead, um, read verse 16, brother. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. You could go straight through the 20. We gonna, we, we, we'll break it down. Curse shall thou be in the city. Curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. So start right there. So when the scriptures say, curse shall thou be in the city, meaning when they say curse shall thou be in the city, they ain't talking about no one person. Curse. A curse is a bad thing. It mean a, it mean the whole people going to be cursed in this city. Okay. So we got, let's, this is our city, Philadelphia. Okay. We're going to talk about Philadelphia. We're going to talk about New York. We talk about New Jersey. So Philadelphia, you got uh, Center City. In Center City, Philadelphia, you got Edomites with all these businesses all up and down everywhere. You got over the beginning part of uh, South Philly, right outside of Center City, where you got all the restaurants and everything. You know, people living kind of good. Then when you start going a little bit deeper into like West Philly and North Philly and North East, um, the beginning before um, North East, all these parts of Philadelphia ain't nothing but our people. And what you see in the, in the, in the parts of our people, Germantown, all those places, abandoned houses, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about ornate structures, beautiful. They abandoned. And our people walking around like they zombies. All in the hood. Robbing and stealing. And guess what? All the businesses that's out there, every McDonald's, every Crown Fried Chicken, every every damn liquor store, whatever the case may be, you want to name it. Ain't none of our people on them. The grocery stores, our people don't own it. Only thing our people got over there is what? Mosques and churches. Right? Mosques and churches, and ain't none of them fixing none of the conditions that's going on in them neighborhoods that we in. You got something, brother, you want yes. to bring out? Go ahead. Um, a lot of people don't know um, the definition of ghetto. You look up the word ghetto in the dictionary, it tells you where you, where, you know, the most high put us and where they think we belong. The definition of ghetto is a part of a city, especially a slum area occupied by a minority group of, of or groups put in or restricted just restricted to an isolated and segregated area or group is that not you is that not our people y'all just don't get it when the scriptures say you curse you're going to be in the city and curse you're going to be in the field we was in them fields in them doggone cotton fields and them sugar cane fields and guess what we still in them damn fields. They might be out there getting a little money, but guess what? Is a car out there picking them damn cucumbers and, and, and watermelons and all of that. Our people, Judah, Benjamin, they still out there 
picking, uh, suckling tobacco and cucumbers, all those things they still out there doing to this day. All you got to do is take your behind that live up here in the Northeast, go down South and see for yourself during the summertime. See who out there in them fields. Y'all think this is a joke? We coming to show you ain't nothing funny about this joke. Go ahead, read, brother. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which his statutes, which his commandments this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we only read, we only went through one thing so far. So now in verse 17 said, Cursed shall there be in this, uh, thy basket and thy store. The, your store ain't talking about the store that you go out there and then you buy something from the store. The store is like your cupboards. They ain't going to be full. You're going to have to struggle to try to keep them full. Your basket is those things, the, the money that you would get to be able to do that. Uh, that ain't easy to come by here with us. Go ahead, read on um, verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. So start right there. The fruit of your body is your children. That means they're going to be cursed. Then the fruit of the land, meaning all the things that could be produced by us, is not going to be produced. We ain't going to be able to do it. You think because you got a Jay-Z out there and uh Beyonce... Um, Cardi B and all of that that you doing something you ain't doing nothing because all of them and all their money then tried to open all type of countless types of corporations for the advancement of our people and they all got shut down because you ain't in charge of none of them licenses they need to get to keep the business going you ain't in charge of none of that I don't give a damn how much money you got. You can walk in there to that man with a billion dollars and put it on the table and say, you know what? I want to open a school for minorities in my neighborhood. And I want to open a grocery store chains in my neighborhood or whatever the case may be. So Mr. Edomite going to say, all right, I need you to get me the information so that you can fill out this license, that license, and then you're going to need this license, you're going to get this permit, that permit, and this permit, and then I need you to get this, and I need you to get the code for that, and code for this, or whatever the case may be, and every time you come up here with, with all the stuff that you come up there with, the first billion dollars that you done came up with, now you done put another million dollars on that trying to get all the licenses and stuff that he said, till you finally realize it just ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. And then every time you go to him, with whatever it was that he told you, oh, no, this is the wrong form. You got to fill out this form so that you can get this license for that form. And then once you do that, then you got to fill this out to get that. He going to spin you. Just like Khalil spinning them records. He's going to spin your behind. And you ain't going to get nowhere. That's how they stop you in your tracks. Don't matter how much money you got, Negro. You still ain't gonna get past his laws and and them and them um, permits and everything else he set forth. Go ahead, read verse um, finish eighteen. The increase of thy kind and thy flocks of thy sheep. Nineteen. Cursed shall thou be when you thou comest in. Cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. So you think that means that you come out the door, you're going to be cursed. And you, and, and you come back in the door, you're going to be cursed. No, that ain't what they're talking about. That's talking about when you come out of your mom's womb, you curse from the gate. And when your behind get put in the dirt, you still curse. That's what it's talking about comings and goings. You show me somebody that's just not cursed other than us. That when they come into this earth, into this world, your skin is your sin. When it comes to the other nations, and going out is the same thing. Go ahead, read, um, 20. yeah, 20. Deuteronomy 28, verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing 
vexation and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me okay so now let's break that down hmm he said the lord shall send upon thee curses and vexation and rebuke the co rebuke is correction right he tried to do that but it ain't work and all that thou set in thy hand, meaning everything you put your hand to do, you ain't going to prosper from it. Y'all heard of Black Wall Street? Mm -hmm. What happened? They tore it down. They tore it down. They thought they was out there doing the, doing the doggone thing. Yeah, we, we um, today can say, oh, man, look what they did to us. You know what I'm saying? And be mad as hell. But who are we supposed to really be mad at? Ourselves. ourselves because we put ourselves in this predicament the most high used them other nations is a tool to destroy our behind oh you think you bad oh you think you over these curses you think you over verse 20 and Deuteronomy 28 that's what the Lord said when you out there building them hospitals and you out there building them churches and building them schools and you out there got your little economy rolling and, and going and your banks and everything else there, you think that verse 20 ain't talking about you? And what'd he do? He firebombed it. Mm -hmm. Blew it up and killed Negroes left and right. And yeah, we could be mad about what happened. And we could be mad at the people that did. But at the end of the day, no matter how you cut and slice it, you can't blame nobody but ourselves. All because we wanted to listen and do what we wanted to do, right? right. We, we think we know, we know it all. We know more than the Lord. We're running around out here now, arguing back and forth, you know, uh, camp to camp or you know, the Facebook, whatever, arguing about what the Lord say. And the book say stuff plain in English, man. And we still trying to go around it. And make it believe what we wanted it to believe. I tell you again, you better get your head out of your four point of contact, which is your behind, and start doing what the scriptures say. So jump down to verse uh, 30. Deuteronomy 28, verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Start right there. Betroth is when you promise. Um, promise um, this woman that's your wife she belonged to you you belong to her but it's another man gonna lie with her <laughs> uh, this ain't talking about your woman cheating on you and gonna lay with another man this talking about this man gonna take your woman that belong to you and he gonna get busy with it she ain't asked that man to do that What's that called, brother? Rape. That's called rape. Gonna rape your wife and a damn thing you can do about it. That's one of the curses. So you're gonna take the tender and delicacy of our beautiful black woman and ravage her in the black man's face. And it'll doggone thing that we could do about it but watch but watch because you go out there trying to be a damn hero you get yourself killed now who gonna take care of her and your children because you want to be hero could you imagine that that's one of the curses so go ahead read that again verse 30 Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lay with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. So let's break that down. Um, first of all, I would like for you to, you know, that's listening, and that's sharing these videos, and sharing these audios to the people. Watch 12 Years a Slave. Watch, watch that movie, Roots, and all these kind of things like that. Especially the scene where um, 
the woman was inside of the house and the and the Edomite had put his hands on her inside of the room and took her and, and, and did whatever he wanted to do with her. You know, because you, you, you think because this stuff ain't happening to your behind right now that you just impervious to what happened to our ancestors. That things and you didn't, and then some of y'all that's out there. Oh, I can't watch this. I can't sit here and watch this. You better watch it, because watching it is what's gonna save your behind. So right here, when it says, "Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell," meaning you're gonna go out there and you're gonna build a house for the master, the plantation house. You think he hired somebody to go do that to build that house? No. He ain't hired nobody to do that. He had your black behind out there with all them wood, with a saw and everything, cutting up the wood, building his big giant plantation house. He had you out there doing that. He had your children out there bringing the nails to him so he could hammer them nails in, building up your, um, building up the house for his plantation, building up his white house, building up all the other the Senate house and everything else, all for free. And you. Idiots don't sit here and don't think about what the scripture is saying. Washington's supposed to be neutral ground, right? So why in the world slaves build the White House? That means that they was for what was happening to us when they built that White House. When they built the Senate, the House of Representatives. That was our people building that stuff. So the same people you talking about out there supposed to be representing us was the people that we was building these houses for for free and the places that they dwell in for free. Y'all better wake up. So um, now it says thou shalt plant a vineyard, meaning that all of sugar cane and cotton and soybeans and cucumbers and watermelons that you out there planting. All the money that's made from selling these things, tobacco, all the money made from selling these things, you ain't getting a dime of it. Not a dime, not one piece of proceed whatsoever. You ain't getting none of it. But you out there tilling the ground, planting the seeds, harvesting this, the crop, taking it to the market, master get all the money, and your behind go right back out in that field and do the process all over again. And you ain't got a dime. Go ahead, uh, jump down to verse 32, bro. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So stop right there. So he said, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Okay. <laughs> See, people read this scripture and say, oh, well, they were just given to another people. Mm. If, if you gave your children to another people, why are you looking for them? That don't make no sense, do it? Nope. <laughs> so you're only looking for your kids that's lost. Right or wrong. Right. So it's telling you that your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another me another people, meaning that they're going to be taken from you and given to somebody else. And you're going to be looking for them, meaning that you ain't see them given away. You came back and found out they was gone. And then now you're going to be failing longing for them all day long. Longing. When you longing for something like you longing for love. That means you're in search of it forever. You're longing for your children all day long. Well, guess what? If you watch 12 Years a Slave, you know that movie that you don't want to see? You know Rosewood, the movie you don't want to see? You know Roots, the movie you don't want to see? You watch those movies, you see what longing all day long look like. When your children are taken away from you and the mama crying and screaming every day. Just imagine your children that you've been raised up and feeding and somebody take your babies and you don't know where they at and where they went. You mean to tell me the next day you're going to stop thinking about their kid and about your children? 
No. The day after that, you're going to stop thinking about your children? No. You're going to be thinking about your children every single day. You're going to always have that hope that they're still out there alive. That you'll be able to see them. You're going to always have that hope. And guess what? For our ancestors, that hope ain't never came. Because they never saw their children again. What else you fail to realize? Look how they mix us all up. Let's say, let's say, um, plantation owner um, Durant had bought a husband and wife together, right? And the husband and wife now is Ella Durant and Steve Durant, right? Then they had their children. And all the little Durant children, right? Now Durant children get sold the Epps. Now them children's name ain't Durant no more. It's Epps now. So now they raise up and then they have their children and they get sold to the Brown family. Now how are you going to be able to connect Brown back with Epps, back with Durant? You ain't going to be able to do it. Oh, the only way you're going to do it is if, if it was some kind of way that you was able to keep record of what owners you was going to to get back to your family. Your behind couldn't even read or write, so how in the world was you going to be able to do that? And the names that you carry right now today is a memorial every single day of your slavery. So for a dummy out there to say that slavery never happened, well, if it didn't never happen, then how the hell you get that last name? That's how you shut down all these idiots out there with their stupidness and their stupidity. So the scriptures say, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And you can go ahead and finish that part. You got something, brother? Yes. Go ahead. Just to clear things up, you know, for people that's you know, just getting into the truth. Um, your, your last name comes from the plantation that you was on. If, it, if you know, if you don't understand what Brother Obadiah is, you know, saying about slavery, um, it's your last name is from what plantation? It's not from somebody who gave you a last name. If you were from the Riggins plantation, that's what you knew your name to be. I just wanted to clear that up. All right. There, there it is right there. So, you know, the, now you see where your name came from, um, the name that you carry. The Most High gave us a name. We get into that a little later. You, We get into that a little later. But he told us that our name is going to be taken away from us. But we're going to get into that a little later too. So um, so now the, the, the bottom part of verse 32 um, get that after um, all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Meaning you ain't going to have no kind of might whatsoever to get back your family once it's taken away from you. Ain't like you're going to walk up to master and say, where my family go? Tell me now. And and you're going you gonna to pull you a net turner and bust everybody upside the head and go get them back. No, they ain't going down. That ain't happening. They're going to be gone, and they're going to be gone forever. And the dog going to think you can do to get them back. Nothing. So that's what it means. Ain't no might in your hand. You already know we ain't no military because it, because we did. How we go into slavery in the first place? And then all you running around here talking about we Africans. We all Africans or whatever the case may be. Well, I don't care if they, they were selling your behind for guns and ammunition and wine. Them same Africans. And using them same guns with the ammunition to put your behind on them ships. And lock you away in West Africa on the coast and places like Fort Judah. All you got to do is go start go on to Google and pull up the, the, the slave, the slave holding ports in, in um, West Africa. 
The white man ain't put your behind in them in them hot cells. The floors concrete and the walls is made out of steel. I don't know if y'all ever been to Africa before, but Africa run through the, the equator. If you've been to Texas or Arizona or places like that, and you felt that heat, guess what? The same heat you feel in Arizona, 120 something degrees, 115 and 16. Could you imagine being in a building? The floor is cement with steel reinforced walls all around, the ceiling reinforced. What happens? When that heat hit that steel, hmm. you talking about you, you can't even touch them all. You'll have third degree burns on your hand. And they had us packed in there like sardines. And I'm talking about we st ain't even no room to, to stand up or sit down. Men, women, some women pregnant, you know what I'm saying? The children, feet um, defecating and peeing, uh, urinating, all in the same spot you're standing in. Those are the conditions that we was in. And y'all think it's okay to forget the people that did this to you? Are you out of your damn mind? You want to forgive somebody for doing something like this to you. And they the ones that are telling you that that's in the past. But they never endured none of this stuff. They wouldn't even be able to survive 20 minutes. We was out there for 30, 40 days waiting on them ships. To come get us. And put our ancestors on this ship. And take a year to get over, to, over here. Just imagine all of that in your brains. But guess what? The most high going to put it back all in your mind. Oh, yeah. You remember I told you earlier in the class that every Israelite on the face of this planet, regardless of you believe or not, you're going to know you're the children of God. Because guess what? He going to put a DVR in your brain and he going to hit that rewind button and play it back slow motion. You're going to be crying like a baby because you're going to see everything that happened to us from the beginning to the end. You're going to see it all. So now let's, um, let's get um, verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 38, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. Always. Always. So that means we're going to be... We, they say that a, a land... Shall I mean shall a nation that thou knowest not? Okay. Once again, news flash. Did anybody, did any of the Israelites, anybody in Africa even know this land over here on the Western Hemisphere even exists? No. They say the nation that you don't know. You knew all the nations in in Italy. And Greece, and Asia, and Africa. Your you knew all those lands, you knew the people of those lands. But these are gonna be some people that speak in a language you ain't never heard before, like Portuguese, like French, like English. Those languages came meant so long ago. You act like they ancient. They ain't ancient languages. Those languages only been on the earth maybe, maybe a thousand years. Maybe. That ain't long ago. That ain't long ago. 12, 14, maybe 1500 years ago. Go ahead, read. Oppress, well, let's stop right there. Oppress and crush always. Who's oppressing? Is other nations getting oppressed in the streets, in the city? No. No. Just us. Is our people the ones getting shot down in the street with no guns? No kind of weapon whatsoever. Man got killed with a Subway sandwich, and they said it was a gun. 
another brother with a book, another brother with a chicken wing, said the chicken wing was a knife. They just want, they just killing us wholesale and they getting away with it. They said that we're going to be oppressed and crushed always. You name a time and period from, from the time that we got the slave ship to now where we ain't being oppressed. Please, somebody out there that all love the, love the white man so much and love the Chinese man and the Japanese man so much, please show me, show Brother Juan, when in history were we not oppressed as a people from slavery all the way up to now? When? When was that when, when all of that season stopped and we were just happy, happy go lucky people? Never. We bring in the truth, whether you like it or not. Go ahead, read 34, brother. So, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. You're going to be mad as hell. But all the stuff that you see going on in your life, see going on with your people, you're going to be mad as hell about it. And guess what? Ain't a damn thing you can do about it. Nothing at all. Go ahead, jump down to 36. The, the Lord shall...